Oh, um, I will. Hello, my name is Isabel Beer. I'm a reporter with um, Schneps, and I will just like quickly read out the rules of the debate. Um, tonight's debate and all our future debates will feature two rounds of questions. The first round will include questions that we have prepared. Um, but then the second portion, um, viewers will play a second role where they will be able to submit um, questions that they would like to ask the candidates using the Q&A feature, which is on the bottom of the screen or should be. Um, so if there are any public members of the public who are interested in asking a question, um, click on the Q&A button and we will screen the questions we receive. If, if they're appropriate, we'll place them and ask them to the candidates. So um, let's go to opening statements. Each candidate has two minutes for their opening statement and we will follow in alphabetical order. So Mr. Banks, would you like to begin? Yes, well, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I think the district has been waiting for this opportunity uh, to uh, hold folks accountable. Uh, my name is Chris Banks. I'm a candidate for the New York City Council a longtime fighter for folks in the 42nd Council Matic District, uh, tenant organizer, community leader, um, president of the 75th Precinct Community Council, community board member serving as the co-chair of the transportation, co-chair of public safety, co-chair of sanitation, and just a fighter for the voiceless here in the 42nd Council Matic District. Again, I wanna thank you for tonight. And I look forward to having a spirited debate. Thank you very much. Um, Council Member Barron, would you like to, to speak? Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Council Member Charles Barron. I spent 12 years in the City Council. I'm back for two more years. I was 14, six years in the State Assembly. And I've had a tremendous track record no other council member in the city has brought in more affordable housing to our district than we have. My wife was also into the electoral arena. We have brought over 20,000 units of real affordable housing as we define affordability. No other council member in the city has done that. We brought in three new $88 million schools built from the ground up. Uh, no other district has done that. 6,000 jobs. We were able to get two new libraries. We just celebrated the East Flatbush Library and also one in New Lots will be coming up in another year. We were able to secure $50 million worth of scholarships for CUNY students. And we have a black male initiative for black males who need to get through the college system so they don't go into the prison system. And we've been able to create jobs for people, stop foreclosures, we stopped Walmart from coming in. Everybody thought Walmart was gonna create jobs, even bringing all the jobs. We stopped them because they create unemployment, they create poverty. So we have a tremendous track record, been a voice for our people. We put reparations on the map in this state. Now a bill has been passed. We put reparations on the map in the city council and we continue to be the voice of East New York the strongest voice East New York has ever had. And we will continue to do that. We believe our district appreciates the work that we've done and we believe we will be reelected come June 27th. All right, that was just at time. Thank you so much. Um, now we will move to the first round of questions, which Aiden will ask about the candidates. In this round, each candidate will have two minutes for their answer and their opponent will have one minute to provide a rebuttal. I will be keeping track of the candidates' time as we go via an alarm on my phone. Candidates will be alerted when their time has expired and will be muted if they do not promptly wrap up their responses. We will maintain alphabetical order. So for the first question, Mr. Banks will lead off, followed by Council Member Barron. Then Council Member Barron will start with a second question, followed again by Mr. Banks for the third and so on. So I'll hand it over to you, Aiden, to ask the questions. Uh, great. Thank you both for being here so much. Uh, thank you both for being here tonight. Um, I will start with this, and, and you both touched on it in your opening statements. Uh, but Mr. Banks, you're, you're challenging one of the longest serving veterans of New York City politics, uh, having represented East New York in the City Council and the Assembly for 
more than two decades. Why do you think it's time for a change? Well, uh, it's not what I think. It's what the district thinks. Knocking on over thousands and thousands of doors. The residents are frustrated with do-nothing politics, stale leadership, and the fact that we have the biggest housing expansion, according to my opponent, number one in affordable housing, but also number one in inaccessibility. The housing that has been brought to the district, when you knock on doors, folks say they're not getting it. So we're saying that we need to fix that. He hasn't dealt with that. Also, we have an oversaturation of shelters. He's been in office over 25 years. He had six years in the assembly, passed only one bill, and it was a poorly written bill uh, that had to be rewritten. Uh, and also, we have uh, there was no legislation passed to deal with the shelter issue. He lied to the people in the district and told us that he was going to pass a resolution. We didn't elect him to talk about passing a resolution. We elected our elected officials to pass legislation. He has been a failure, an abject failure, and the folks are holding him accountable. He doesn't knock on doors anymore because he's taken his eye off the ball and his focus has been on other parts of the world. But we've been focused on the residents of the 42nd Pounsomatic District. And that's the reason why we're asking folks to hold him accountable and elect real leadership that's going to fight for you and hold your interests as the number one priority. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, so, Council Member Bre uh, Barron, uh, to you. Well, on the other hand, why why should the voters of your district give you another term in office? And if you'd like to respond to anything that Mr. Banks just said, well, nothing he said because it's all a bunch of the same garbage I hear every election. But the bottom line is the voters rejected him every time he ran against us, and the voters in our district appreciate the fact that we did bring in real affordable housing. You can't go anywhere in New York City and get a two-bedroom apartment for nine hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars a month, a three-bedroom for eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Not, we didn't stop shelters. Nobody can do that. Not even the powerful speaker of the city council was able to do that. And not neither any of my opponents were able to do that. But we did get over 300 families out of shelters into permanent housing. This is why the people vote for us all the time. They do the traditional thing, knock on doors, put up flyers, send out mailers, get people to endorse them, but they have no track record and dealing with real concrete issues that the people are concerned about. This is why we win. I have never lost since I've been in office and they've been running against us for 10 years now and they lost each time because the people will speak, speak. It doesn't matter who endorses you now. The only endorsement that counts is on the 27th. Talking about people being fatigued and tired. He should be tired of losing. We are at time. Um, uh, can I rebut to that? No, the it's my question the, time. You go the after The councilman me. sounds delusional. You go after me. Hey, y'all going to right keep to the format? Uh, yes, very keep to the format? Right. Right. Yeah. Keep to the format. Keep to the format. Keep to the format. We're going to meet both there. Uh, Council Member Barron, I think we lost your video there. So the format is that you once um, one candidate is given two minutes to respond to one question, their opponent is given one minute to rebut. There is no, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to provide a second minute rebuttal. So right. we will be moving on to the second question. Apologies. I don't get a rebuttal. Well, I can't, re I can't rebut the lies the council mentioned spewed. Uh, okay. It's not the format. If you're you going to break the format, Charles, then it's going to be a free for all. Uh, listen, if you're going to allow him just to continue to lie and be held, he and can't handle be held the truth. unaccountable, he, can't, he doesn't want to be held accountable. He can't handle the truth. Okay. And his right, deficit guys. of a record, the barren record. All right. I right. muted you all both right. again. Um, Crosstalk is not helping anyone, of course. Uh, Mr. Banks, the next question will be directed towards you. You can use it however you'd like. If you'd like to respond to anything, uh, that the council member just said, uh, you can do so uh, during your time. Um, but I did want to steer the conversation towards housing, uh, as that was much of what the council member just said. Uh, you, you talked about affordability and, and the lack of affordability in, in your words. Um, 
how would you be different? How would you uh, approach the rezoning process? You asking me this? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm asking Mr. Banks. I thought I'd get the question next. It is Charles, follow is, the rules. It is oh, Councilmember Barron's turn to Thank respond. you. Thank you. So I don't get a rebuttal? I thought that no, I it no, was a, a, no, hold on, you please, don't. Charles, please. You don't. Unfortunately, you're not in charge unfortunately. Not the Charles Barron circle. You don't. It's my question. can take control of the debate. You don't. And, Charles, okay. Both yeah, of you will have ample challenged. time we'll to respond that. to questions that we pose if you do adhere to the format of the debate, which is, you know, this is a pretty well, traditional if, format. If, if the councilman wasn't tardy and late, we would be on time. So I, 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 the fact that, hold on, let me finish. The fact that now I'm losing a minute, this is an important debate. We have an, a, a, somebody who's been in office over 25 years and the residents are sick and tired of him. And we can't we can't hold them accountable. If y'all gonna allow for this, it's that's gonna crazy. Be free this for is all. this is man, free for all. And this and is... Nobody's gonna hear. It. All right, you're both muted, sure. Jim. Um, <laughs> Mr. Banks, you do have a point about Mr. Barron uh, being late to the debate. That's why I gave you the next question. Said uh, so, you will have the next question. Uh, change the rules on the flyer. Apologies, Council Member. Uh, Mr. Banks, it is your turn now. Well, as I was saying. Uh, when it comes down to the housing that has been brought to the district, the councilman has said that he's number one in housing. He's, there's been a major housing expansion in the district. I do agree to that. But what is a fact is that there are residents, and I've knocked on doors, thousands of doors in the district, and they say they have not shared in this housing expansion. So you can't purposely mislead the folks to believe so it's not a question of affordability. That is an issue, too. We can have a debate about that. But it's about accessibility. Are the indigenous folks of our community benefiting from the housing that's coming in? And the answer is no. If you knock on the doors and get in touch with your residents, your constituents, Mr. Councilman, you would know that you've been doing a poor job in, 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 in making the housing accessible to the residents. Thus. That's the reason why we have an issue of homelessness in the district. We're number one in, ho in, in homelessness. And we have a host of issues that you have just not addressed. Whether it's uh, uh, we have public safety issues that folks are dealing with. You've turned your backs on the residents of Linden Houses. So you're building all this housing, but yet you have Linden Plaza, which has gone to the dogs. And it has happened under your watch 25 years of the Baron regime. And all we have gotten has been lies, distortions, and we've been an isolated council mag district. And we're asking the residents to hold him accountable and throw him out of office. Okay. Uh, so from, from here on, we are going to alternate so that no one gets two questions in a row. Um, that seems like the fairest way to do it. Um, so council member Barron, you just heard uh, your opponent speak about your record on housing, and I will give you a chance to respond to that. Uh, you you are muted, sir. On the, if you knocked on the door of residents, that means they live there. You'd have to be, I mean, no one, no one can go into our district and say we didn't, we stopped gentrification. 70% of our district is black. 20% of our district is Latino, Latina. 90% is black and brown. Every other area around us has been gentrified. Bedford-Stuyvesant, Canarsie, you name it, not East New York. We do knock on doors. We do talk to our residents. We do speak to people, go to block association meetings. We go to tenant association meetings. So we are in very much contact. And the same Linden Plaza that he speaks of, I beat you in Linden Plaza every time you've run. So if he was telling the truth, he would have won Linden Plaza. He has never beaten us in Linden Plaza because he's not telling the truth. The people are with us. We beat him in every area. Every time oh, he's run against us, we beat him in time. every area and we will do it again. Okay. Um, so Mr. Banks, we will turn to you next for the next question. And if you'd like to use any time to respond to that, you are welcome to do so, but I wanna shift over to the issue of policing and public safety. Um, 
obviously in East New York, it's a big issue, uh, policing and the role of police. How, how would you see yourself as being different than the council member? Um, and what do you philosophically see as the role of policing? Well, well, listen, we can't police our way out of the situation that's taking place in East New York. We have this crime all over the country. We need police accountability. We need community accountability. But let me just address the delusional statements with our out of touch council member. And the fact that I've been knocking on doors in Linden Plaza and getting the results that I've been getting as far as speaking to residents and they're saying they don't see him. He's nowhere to be found. So I don't know what Charles is talking about. It seems like he's he's making up stuff. And once again, this is this is, has been his uh, his his approach to deal with folks in in this in the 42nd Council Mag District. He says gentrification doesn't exist in East New York. Maybe he just doesn't walk the community and see it. There are bike lanes all throughout the community. He <laughs> claims he doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> Linden, we had four public housing developments which have been privatized. He <laughs> blames everybody else but himself. And he's been in office for 25 years. But here's this guy. This is why we need to hold him accountable because you can't get away with making up the facts. The reality, Charles, is if you walked around the community and if you moved around the district and you knocked on doors in Linden Houses, Penn Workman, and Boulevard Houses, they would definitely give you a mouthful of your inability to lead and to organize the tenants in those particular developments to fight against the privatization. So gentrification is here and it's happened under your watch. So please be honest. Don't lie to the people. Tell the truth, first of all. Gentrification is here and it happened under your watch and you've done nothing to fight against it but isolate our community. And I've been working with Congressman Jeffries. I've been working with the Assemblyman Nikki Lucas, Roxanne Passard. You are an isolated island. You're, you can't work with anybody and you can't deliver for our district. And that's the reason why I picked up the endorsement of so many unions and they've thrown him under the bus and they've said they're ready for a change. They're ready to go in a new direction. All right, that is time. Um, council member, the uh, original question was about public safety and policing, but I'm sure you'd like to respond to some of what was just said. Uh, well, so I well, well not really, not really, because he's just blowing steam. He doesn't even know what gentrification is. If he thinks bike lanes mean gentrification, that's a very uneducated answer. But anyway, I want to talk about my accomplishments, not a reaction to all of his made up stuff. The bottom line is a Lafayette village is coming into our district that I negotiated with Governor Cuomo and his housing commissioner, 2,600 units of affordable housing to the income level of the people in our community. Ebenezer is another development that came in, thousands of housing developments that is filled with our people, <laughs> what the North doors he's knocking on. They're filled with our people, Ebenezer. I can sit here for the rest of this broadcast and list all of the housing, even studies say that we're number one. That's not me saying it, the studies, the independent studies, and we help homeowners. We've even got new homes out there in Gateway. We have homeowners that have gotten homes because you can't really get out of poverty renting. you got to have some home ownership. So we've done that. We've even created jobs through Man Up Inc. Talking about public safety. If you look at the crime stats, this is facts. He doesn't look at facts, but these are facts. Look at the crime stats from 2001 when I got elected to 2021. Every area of crime went down in the 75th precinct, except police complaints, the committee that he heads up. Uh, Mr. Banks, do I, do, can I rebut the lies and distortions? You, you will uh, throw it back to you on the issue of public safety. If we can keep it on policing and public safety, uh, the floor is well, yours. I've already given my position on public safety. And yes, I am the president of the 75th Precinct Council. And I'm constantly dealing with crime has gone up in the district. Uh, he doesn't want to believe that. But once again, when you're disconnected with the uh, residents of the district, you won't ever know. Uh, and you're in your own little bubble. Uh, and that's the, again, this goes back to my point. 
of holding him accountable. Um, and he talked about the housing and all these projects he's built, but it's not about affordability. He likes to say affordability to who? It's about accessibility to who? If the residents in the district are not sharing in the expansion, and, I, and, and I, let's say this, I wanna be quite clear. Charles is being very dishonest. And yes, I've knocked on thousands of doors in the district and that's what I will continue to do. And that's how I stay engaged and connected as a tenant organizer, as a community leader. The tenants, the community residents are sick and tired and they are not sharing in the housing expansion. So I'm not making this up. If you wanna find that out, Charles, all you have to do is step out your door, step out your office and knock on the doors. Go to Stavard City, go to Linden Plaza, go throughout the district. And they'll, 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 they'll speak to you and let you know what's going on. And being disconnected has not helped us. It has hurt, hurt us. And that's why, again, we're asking the residents, hold him accountable. Don't let him get away with this, uh, this, this small talk, this moving around, this, you know, he's had an opportunity. They've held four political seats in the district. Um, the, 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 the Baron machine has controlled the political power, had a strangle on the political power for the last 25 years. We need new leadership. He's had his time. Now he's asking folks for four more years to do what? To dig us in a deeper hole? We're asking folks to come out and vote against the circus. Well, let me help you, Chris. It's two more years, not four. You got to do some research. But the bottom line All right. is that the residents in our district appreciate the fact that they are in the most affordable homes and then anywhere in the city. These are objective studies. This is not my opinion or his opinion, but he studies nothing. It's just empty rhetoric. The other thing is the crime stats, Comstat is from his police department. I didn't make those statistics up, but he probably never read them. Comstat, the police statistics said from 2001 to 2021, that's 20 years of us in office, crime went down in every category. And I suggest you as organizers of this debate, you look up, don't listen to him, don't listen to me. You look up the calm stats from the police and they'll show you crime has gone down. And Eric Adams just said that crime is down everywhere in the city, except in, in Chris's world. But the bottom line is that the people continue to vote for us for a reason. And the reason is that everybody that brings housing into our district, they're set aside for the homeless. We put over 300 homeless people into permanent housing. He can't match that. He could only repeat the same stuff over and over. Listen to him saying the same thing over and over because he has no track record but to criticize us. Zero track record. We have a proven track record. The people put us in time and time again because they pleased with our record and they reject him every time he's run against us for the same nonsense he's running down tonight. Okay. Nothing. Okay, Councilman, that is your time. Um, can, I, can I get a rebuttal to? Uh, we are going a little bit in circles I mean, here, but I will is... give you just a short period of time and then we're going to move on. Well, once again, guys, uh, I'm not making up anything. I do study ComStat. I'm the president <laughs> of the 75th Precinct Council. Charles doesn't study the district and that's his, that's, he's been out of touch. And he's, listen, you can see it. Every, this is what he's continuously done. This is a continuously uh, a narrative that he has pushed. And the reality is that we need to go in a different direction. Uh, okay. No one's making this up. He's just out of touch. And the reality is that we're asking folks to come out and hold him accountable. This is about, this is it. I mean, he can say all this stuff that the people have rejected me. They've it rejected is. him. We won the assembly seat from him. There was a whole host of things, uh, people that he supported that we beat. So this is about the only seat he actually has is the council seat. And we are going to win that back. And again, folks are supporting me. I have, I'm being supported by local unions. Their rank and file members have unanimously come out and supported me. And the reason why 
nine unions have gotten behind me and Charles DC 37, which has supported you for the last 20 years has supported me and is supporting new leadership. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on from that. Uh, I think we are talking ourselves in circles. Uh, I want to shift over to education. Um, and we will start with the council member on this one. Uh, how would you rate the overall quality of schools in your district? And what would you like to see improved? And what would you do? As we have a great superintendent in our district that we're working very, very hard and closely with. We've had new labs, computer labs in our schools. We have three brand new schools built from the ground up, $88 million each. We have music recording studios in our schools. We have 21st century libraries in our schools. We have text studios, we have pools in our schools. We have the best schools in the city and the district is rising up. The science labs oh, are incredible. It probably doesn't visit our schools, but the science labs are very incredible. So in terms of schools, and we fight for teachers, even though the teachers union goes in another direction, nobody fights for teachers more than us. And we were able to get things. I have a great relationship with the superintendent, the chancellor right now said I'm one of the best and he appreciates working with me. So we have a great relationship with people and power in the school system and no one running against me can come near matching our records and dealing with schools other than to say, you're out of touch. The community doesn't know you. And if anybody's gonna be frustrated as anybody's exhausted from things, to be exhausted from losing and saying the same thing every election. But the bottom line, we had a black inventors rally that three to 400 people from East New York, many schools in the district were represented for black inventors, a whole parade of the great things that our people invented, the traffic light, you name it, shoes, the air condition, and children are now learning about that from the rally that Karan Allen put on who is a great candidate, and Karan Allen, by the way, is organizing the tenant leaders in NYCHA, and we're getting more from that organization than anything our opponents have ever said or done. All right, um, great. All right, Mr. Banks, uh, same question to you. Where has uh, the council member failed on education? What would you like to see improved? And why well, would you I, I, I believe across the board, uh, we, uh, we've worked well. We've provided scholarships to over 100 students through my organization, East New York United Concerned Citizens. We've worked with the principals uh, across the board. Uh, but let me also say this. The reality is that I've worked with different local elected officials. Um, and most recently, the Thomas Jefferson Field, which has been closed down and abandoned for the last seven years under the councilman, under Charles Barron. And Nikki Lucas, who's the current assembly person, in her first year, along with Congressman Jeffries, was able to secure $10, $10 million to fix, $10 million to fix that particular field. Where our students outside the district to be able to practice on that field. So we need to just change the leadership and the council. We need, they time. need a partner and the partner is me. And that's the reason why I'm running for the city council to bring a cohesion amongst the political leadership in the district and deal with some of the convoluted issues that are facing our district, especially when it comes to education. Uh, the reality is that Charles has been there over 25 years and he has not delivered. He's blowing smoke tonight. And for those who have the nostrils to inhale it, I feel bad for you, but I'm hoping guys that you make your voice loud and clear and you vote him out and hold him accountable. All right, uh, next we are going to move on to the issue of transportation. Uh, the Brooklyn bus network redesign is ongoing. Uh, and some in, in South, some Southern Brooklyn and Eastern Brooklyn see this as an opportunity to boost public transit in an otherwise, uh, in a neighborhood that otherwise lacks many options for public transportation. Uh, what as council member would you like to see done and what has not been done so far? And we will start with you, uh, council member Barron. In terms of transportation. Well, first of all, just on that uh, 10 million from Thomas Jefferson Field, 
asked the chancellor, he said, thanks to you, Charles Barron, we got 10 million for the bill. So ask the chancellor, not Chris Banks who fabricates. But the bottom line in transportation, we were able to get the bus service extended out to the mall area because our people needed to be transferred. By the way, that whole mall area was something we brought into the district and we brought more jobs. We stopped Walmart. My opponent was for Walmart coming in, ripping us off. He said, oh, we need Walmart. We need Walmart because Walmart is great. Walmart is a plantation. It's an oppressive, oppressive place. We stopped them and got over 6,000 jobs in that area against what the opponent was fighting for. And we were able to get thousands of units of affordable housing out there and home ownership. We worked very closely with EBC, the East Brooklyn Congregation, Reverend Brawley. We worked closely with him. We worked closely with Reverend A.R. Bernard to get thousands of units of housing. Talking about bringing people together, A.R. Bernard, Reverend Brawley, ask anybody in the state legislature, ask anybody in the city council, they all tell you that I unite people and I'm able to get more out of the budgets. He doesn't even know what a budget is, probably never even read a budget. But the bottom line, all the stuff that we've done, people appreciate. My legislative record, I am a co-sponsor of thousands of pieces of legislation, not the prime sponsor because I speak truth to power. And the Joshua Avito, Prince Joshua Avito Community Center, we brought that in. A new community center, $12 million. Our young people run it, man up and good shepherd run the center. They all work there because of us. We told the developer we had to have a community center with a gymnasium, with a recording studio, with a culinary arts, with exercise, karate class, music, you name it. He cannot point to anything near a Joshua Community Center we brought in. My colleagues are asking me how I do it, and I've been doing stuff with them now. So we have been tremendously accomplished on the 27th. The only endorsement that will matter is the endorsement of the majority of the voters. And that's the endorsement we have gotten in the past, and we're going to get it again because they appreciate the work that we've done. Um, we are going to go to you, Mr. Banks, next. I just want to make a note that I have been told we are able to go to 8 o'clock. So we are going to keep you guys here for another 10 minutes because of the late start. Um, so, but Mr. Banks, uh, same question to you, and if you'd like to respond to anything that the council member just said. Well, again, I'm going to hit on a point that, again, Charles Barron is out of touch. This, the rhetoric <laughs> that he displayed or that he's talking about tonight <laughs> is not what's going on on the ground. And this is the reason why you, you got to watch how people act, not what they say. And he's He's, he's, he's a good speaker. He's a good orator. And I just want to set this stage up that he's a great orator, a great speaker. And he knows how to get folks to believe things that are not true. The fact of the matter is this has been the councilman's rack record. Four public housing developments have been privatized under him. We're leading with number two as far as being oversaturated shelters. He's produced no legislation. He spent six years in the assembly one bill that was poorly written. He spent 12 years in the city council, not one piece of legislation that he's authored because he's un a, he's incapable. Let me be correct. He's incapable of building relationships with his colleagues. Two or three. He is unable to work with his colleagues. And this is how we know. He's come out, he's been overly disrespectful to this first black speaker of the city council, Adrian Adams, who's his colleague. He's unable to work with her. He's come out against the first black uh, attorney general of the New York state. Um, and these are people, these are his colleagues. He claims that he's able to work with them, bring people together. He has divided our community. And that's why he's afraid of this election. He's afraid of the results. He's af afraid of real accountability. And that's the accountability that the voters are going to slap him with on uh, June the 27th and hold him accountable for not putting the district first for the last 
25 years. Uh, Mr. Uh, Councilmember Barron, I will give you just an opportunity to respond to that. Well, first of all, whether you like me or not, you have to be honest. If you're doing that bad, people are not going to vote for you over and over and over again for 20 years. You know, people are very intelligent. That's why I like to have the base. People that are watching this, they know the real deal. There's no way people would vote for me over and over again and my wife over and over again for the four seats he talks about. If in fact, it ain't my charisma, it ain't how well I talk. They see what we produce. And I challenge you, the producers of this program, they see the substance. You come around, I'll come around to East New York with me and I will show you the progress we made in 20 years. From the parks, $70 million worth of parks. We have the best parks in the city. He can't deny that. His team, his machine team, when they were in power, it was just a, you know, a, a big piece of dirt in the park. Now we have Linden Park, which we call Sunny Carson, but one of the best parks in the city. They give us credit for when I was in the city council, I was able to get a workforce development program that hired 6,000 people in black and brown communities. We did that. And people appreciated that. We united people around that. Legislation is not just you being the prime sponsor. I was the co-sponsor of hundreds of pieces I'm of legislation. And the, the infrastructure, time. facilities, resources, programs, CBOs, seniors, all of that, that we've done. That's why we're going to get real. Well, we didn't, we didn't hire you to be a co-sponsor. We hired you to be a legislator. Do I get a rebuttal to that? Aiden, you're muted. Do I get a rebuttal to that? Excuse me, I just uh, put the council member on mute so that you can respond. Yes, Mr. Banks, you can go ahead. Once again, we didn't hire Charles to be a co-sponsor. If he's, all he's doing is just co-sponsor and co-sponsor, we need legislation. And in his district, that's dealing with a host of issues, oversaturation of shelters. Um, uh, we're dealing with high crime, high, uh, high uh, um, homelessness. We need folks that's going to pass legislation that's going to affect everyday lives. And the reality is, under Charles Barron, he doesn't like to talk about this because he likes to run from his real record, and he likes to tell folks what he wants them to hear. But I'm going to tell you the truth and bring you back to reality, Councilman. Four NYCHA developments have been privatized under the Councilman. We're oversaturated with shelters, not one piece of legislation to curtail and deal with it. There was a bill when he was in the assembly on the floor that was introduced. It was in the Senate and in the assembly to increase notification to 90 days to strengthen community boards when it comes to when it comes to the uh, fair share clause and dealing with these facilities coming to our community. We heard crickets from Councilman Charles Barron. And now, well, you corrected me correctly, Charles. It's two years. You're right. Now you're asking for two years. Right. Unfortunately, we are at time. Be honest with the people. Vote him out. Do not support this rhetoric of do nothing politics and a terrible record for the last 25 years. He's delusional. We need to throw him out of office. We are uh, at time. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Aiden, would you like to move on? Uh, yes. Uh, I do want to make sure that we, we have a hard cap at, at 8 o'clock. So I, I do want to make sure you get the closing statements in. Uh, but first, I want to ask this one last general question. Uh, we're, we're coming up on the uh, halfway mark of the Adams administration. Um, how do you how do you view his administration? If you were giving him a grade, what grade would that be? Where, where are we moving in the right direction and where are we moving in the wrong direction, both in your district and citywide? Uh, and we will start with you, Councilmember Baer. Well, first of all, um, uh, I encourage my colleague to do some research and you'll find out the facts on our legislative record. But to order to evaluate the Adams administration, you have to be able to study it. You have to look at budgets. My opponent, they don't read. They don't look at budgets and nothing. They just do this empty rhetoric. I looked at a $106.7 billion budget, $8.3 billion in a reserve account, $4 billion of unexpected revenue. And we're telling the Adams administration that stop building shelters, we're oversaturated. 
The Adams administration is violating us, not me. I don't have the power to stop a shelter, but the Adams administration that he supports does. And what Adams does is he builds shelters in black and brown neighborhoods, more in the Bronx, more in, 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 in Brownsville, and none in Bensonhurst, Asian and white, none in Bay Ridge. So it's the mayor, but that's their boy, that's their guy. So they're not gonna criticize the mayor. I think the mayor with a $106 billion budget, we could have taken care of NYCHA. We could have taken care of the retirees. And I'm working on that for their health care. We can do much more priority spending on the things that we need. We could have a workforce development program to create employment. So we deal with double digit unemployment. What about poverty? People don't commit crimes because there's not enough police. They police have an $11 billion budget and he cut money from mental health. He cut money 4% from every agency, including education, healthcare. He's failing our people, but people like my opponent, they will get his support because they don't hold these folk accountable. We were okay. able to do that in my 20 years and get more for our district than any other elected official in the history of our district. All right, just remember, thank can, you. Can, can I rebut that, please? Uh, well, it is your turn to answer the original question, so use that however you want. Charles is incapable, and he's consistently shown that over the 25 years of even bringing those resources to the district, because he's unable to build relationships. When you go into a legislature, and I think Charles needs to uh, uh, do some research as to what how the legislative body works. It's not, it's not a working as a unitary head. It's about working in a collective. And he has not done that. So Charles likes to blame everybody but himself. And he's gotten away with that for years. And that's why we're saying that we have to hold him accountable. He blames uh, the mayor. He blames the governor. He's done this for years. And we have issues, very complicated issues that the district is facing. And all he does is blame everybody else when he's the reason why. So you can sell a bridge to somebody who wants to buy it, but we're telling the voters, don't buy the bridge. Vote this circus out of office. We've had 25 years and enough is enough. I'm frustrated, and that's the reason why I'm running. I'm frustrated okay. with do nothing politics. I'm okay. frustrated. Okay. With, Notice I'm frustrated he didn't answer the question what, about Adams. Well, the Charles, <laughs> Notice I, that, and notice he, he didn't say anything you're, you're about the, his Charles, track record, what he's done. He focused the, on me for the whole debate because he's done nothing. Because Charles, you have okay. been office for twenty five years, and don't run to don't run and blame the mayor when you're we, to blame. We do want to give you both the opportunity you, to have closing you have, arguments. You so. have no record, but lies and distortion. Okay. Uh, putting you both on mute for a second, just so I can uh, say. Uh, we're going to turn to closing statements uh, in just a minute. Um, if you, you are going to hold you to time on that. I just want to say that this is the District 42 Democratic primary debate. Uh, early voting starts on June 17th. Uh, so everyone should get out there and vote. Uh, wherever you're watching this video, if it's a recording, you, there will be links to both candidates' websites in the description of the video. Um, and now for closing statements, um, we will start with uh, Council Member Barron. Uh, you can unmute. You're on mute there. Uh, you're still on mute there. No? Uh, just add it. You're back on mute. I just want to reiterate what I said at the beginning. I'm running on my record, not rhetoric. My record has shown that over the years, more affordable housing as we define affordability than anyone. Three new $88 million schools, the Shirley Chisholm Campus, the Spring Creek Middle School, and the East, East New York Family Academy. Seven parks renovated, $70 million. You can't miss it. Come into my district. I'll show you it. Millions of dollars for scholarships for CUNY students. 
and we didn't privatize public housing. NYCHA did, and these leaders come to us to help um, them organize. We've done that. We have two new libraries coming into our district. We have a community center that was never built in our district before with Joshua, Prince Joshua Vito Community Center. We did that. We were able to bring out in the extension of the mall, J.C. Penney, ShopRite. If you go to our mall, you'll see our people and ask them their zip, 11207, 11208. We've done all of that. We've expanded transportation. We brought in science labs, computer labs in our schools. We rebuilt auditoriums and brought in air conditions during the summer for our schools, millions of dollars. This is why our people continue to, to work with us and vote for us. And we've had social programs. We put reparations on the map. We, we're the ones who put after school programs, the Victory Music and Dance in our schools, Man Up Inc all of our community, bringing crime down. We're the ones who did all that work. This is why the people love us. When I walk through the community, they, they say, hey, Charles, they, we walk through our community all the time. So, and the reason they love us is because we produce, not empty rhetoric, not attacking our opposition. We produce, we run it on a record, not on empty rhetoric that has done nothing. So I wanted to say to our community, we have a lot of good projects in the making, more housing. We have more schools coming in. Uh, we know the system. Go with experience, unbought, unbossed, spine straight, strong. We are the voice of our people. And I believe that they will reward us on the 27th with the real endorsement that matters. The majority of the voters will vote for Charles Barron for city council, the number one choice. All right, thank you, Council Member. And uh, for your closing statement, Mr. Banks. Well, let me say this. Yes, the real endorsement is uh, from the people, but I want to say that the unions, the non unions that have come out and endorsed me, these are rank and file members who live in his district. And I thank you for the support of all the unions DC 37, uh, 32 BJ, CWA, DC, DC 9, UFT. NYSERC, uh, HCC, all of the unions who came out, and these are the rank and file members who said that they're sick and tired. They're sick and tired of do nothing politics. They're sick and tired of the lies, the distortions, and the reality that is that Charles is out of touch with the district. He talks about this uh, uh, record of accomplishments, but it's really a record of failure. And it's really a record of turning his back on the residents of Linden Plazas. Uh, Linden Plaza. I just, uh, before I start this debate, I got a call from a, a resident who was about to be evicted, who lives here. And the first thing she said, all this housing that's being built in her district, she can't even get an application. She can't even uh, get into the new housing stock that's come into the district. Privatization of NYCHA under Charles for developments. Uh, shelters, more shelters come into the into the district. He's done nothing, no legislation. 12 years in the city council, the same old, same old, same old. Six years in the assembly, the same old, same old, same old. Two years in the council recently, the same old, same old, same old. He is asking the voters for two more years. And I'm telling the voters, Educate yourself. Look at his record. Look at his record and look at it. You can see it clearly. And it's a record of do nothing politics. It's a record of failures. And I am going to work with Congressman Jeffries, Assemblywoman Nikki Lucas, Roxanne Passar. This is the first time in history we'll be able to bring our electors on the same page. And we can't do it with this, <laughs> with this type of or the lack there of leadership that's coming from the, this particular council person. So we're asking folks, vote him out of office. My name is Chris Banks. I'm running for the New York City Council. Come out and vote. And you can check me out. I have a record of fighting for this community. You can go to voteforchrisbanks.com where you can see my record. So come out and vote June 27th. Hold Charles Barron accountable 
right, unfortunately, the crisis. We are at Charles time. out of office. All right. Thank you so much to both of the candidates. Uh, once again, this was the District 42 uh, debate for the Democratic primary. Uh, the election is on uh, June 27th, um, and the early voting period begins on June 17th. Uh, again, wherever you're watching this video, there will be a link to both candidates' websites in the description. And uh, we want to thank both candidates for being here tonight. Thank you, Jay.